the launch vehicle should be a remote con should be remote controlled by the staff just here in the control center. But and it's 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 free from the umbilical tower. Yeah. The power supply from the ground is okay. cut off before it's the launch. It's one minute a countdown to the liftoff and the arms of the tower have uh, let free, let go of, of the rocket, so the rocket is on its own, standing on the ground. So and now the all the cables has been cut off, mm. so it's on telemetry and tracking control. And now the power is cut off from the ground. It's, it's yeah, the power is dependent on the battery <laughs> on board. Thirty seconds to go until the liftoff. This is Xichang Set Flight Bond Center, China's Long March 3B rocket carrying Lunar Probe Chang'e 3. The final countdown has started. Ten second countdown. Ignition now starts. And we have our liftoff. This is the liftoff of Chang'e 3B rocket carrying Chang'e, uh, the Long March 3B rocket carrying Chang'e 3 so into right, space. Right now, the program pitch turn is performed. We, we could see the status of the boosters. Uh, this is the camera on, yeah, the, on the rocket. The camera uh, on the rocket telling us uh, the boosters is working well. Yeah. Four boosters are uh, strapped to the Long March rocket. In fact, this is what the very first time that we used a, a live camera to capture the uh, the working condition of the, the rocket. And very soon we will see the separation of the, the strapped down boosters. Mm. The boosters will let go from the rocket itself. Yeah. This is precisely your previous question that we need to shake off the weight. Mm. So as as far as far as soon as we burn off the fuse, we separate the, uh, the, the boosters. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we finish the first first stage, also we have a first stage separation. Mm. It seems that as in good weather, we can still capture uh, the, flames, the rocket yeah. uh, from our camera. In the clear evening, you can see very far uh, the, the launching itself. And this should be an infrared camera. And we now here is all the tracking uh, stations are now providing their uh, update on the condition of the launch vehicle. So there are several tracking stations just among the track of launch vehicles flight. So very soon we will be we'll be seeing the the, uh, the separation of the strap arm booster from the main uh, engine. Uh, is is it the uh, only country that used this kind of a boosters uh, strapped on rocket uh, that it, we we see here in China? There are many countries. Many countries use, use boosters. Booster technologies. We have we, Why don't we just have a bigger rocket? Uh, instead of having a, a rocket strapped with boosters. The bigger rockets will, will bring us more problems. Well, the boosters have already been separated from yep. the rocket itself. Yes, in fact, the booster technology has been used uh, uh, throughout the world. And uh, China is using the boosters only from the Long March 2 launch vehicle. Uh, but the, uh, it's being widely used to uh, boost the launching capabilities. Uh, they have uh, two kinds of uh, boosters, uh, strap-on boosters. One is uh, liquid fuel, one is solid fuel. The solid fuel even pr provide more power than the liquid fuel. For example, the U.S. Space Shuttle used mm. two solid boosters, mm. including a one large tank of liquid fuel mm. that used the, the shuttle engine itself. So the uh, solid booster is, is more popular. So in the future Long March 5, we might be seeing configuration of uh, liquid fuel and so solid, uh, solid fuel uh, rocket booster mm. configurations. Uh, right now in China we do not have the solid propellant boosters. 
I think this is the the camera taking of the payload uh, uh, inside the rocket. Inside the fairing. As we, uh, as I said, you know, uh, this is the first time uh, that we're using a, a live image uh, of the exterior uh, mm. of the rocket as well as the interior mm. of the rocket. I, I think on the left hand side is the interior of the rocket, on, on the right hand side is an animation of the rocket. Uh, is when is the separation of the first stage? The first stage of the uh, rocket? It should be about 116 seconds. Seconds after the liftoff. Yeah. yeah. And for the boosters, that will be in 20 seconds earlier than the first stage. The whole flight will take about 1,000 seconds. 1,000 seconds. Yeah. And we could see the second stage engines. We have uh, one big engine in the center and four s small ones mm. just around the big one. The four small ones were offer the attitude control ability. The four small ones can be swinged by mm. and the main engine, the bigger one, is fixed. Mm. Uh, is n it is now moving uh, eastward Yeah. Uh, in, in, in the middle of the country and very soon it will probably go off the coast into the ocean, above the ocean. as the rocket travels around the country and even beyond the country into the ocean, we need a lot of tracking and control stations. So mm. this is why you hear uh, a lot of voices. The, the separation of the... F oh, second stage. Yes. The second, second stage. stage. This is the separation mm. of the second stage with the first stage. For the third one. The third one. Two and third. Uh, this The third stage and the second stage of the rocket have come off. The first, then the second, will be re-entered several minutes later. Okay. And we could al also hear some names of the ground station, mm. just like Yibin, Xichang. Mm. Because they relay to track yeah. uh, the, set, the satellite and, and the launch, the launch vehicle. vehicle. And when it, uh, as you said, when it uh, goes beyond the country in t o over the ocean, uh, then the tracking ships will take over uh, the tracking and command. I, I, exactly. We use uh, some of the tracking ships uh, in, in our mission to, to the Pacific areas that, so that to ensure that we have a constant eye over the launch vehicle. So this is called early stage uh, uh, tracking and control, which is very crucial for the success of this mission. So this picture you can see these fires. Mm. In fact, it doesn't look like any fire on Earth because it has no atmosphere mm. at this moment and very small or lit little atmosphere. Mm. So it doesn't create the, the fire that we can see on Earth. In fact, it's, it's injection of plasma into mm. the space. So this is why you can see the picture is quite different from the fire that we see from the first and second stage. Mm. That's where uh, it gets the boost uh, of the Earth. Yes, the, the, the main, yeah, but in fact it doesn't need the atmosphere to for its boost. It, new, it has its own fuel and oxidizer, so it, it travels on itself even in space. So right now the launch vehicle is almost flying over the ocean right now. And the feature of LAMA 3B or LAMA 3A series the trajectory tra features will be included three flights periods. Mm. That means the third stage will restart after the coast arc. So there are two ignitions for third stage. Later we will see that.
It's eight minutes uh, uh, after the liftoff, uh, we now see the live picture uh, attached to the rocket. So the, the rocket now doing is to gain speed and momentum mm. uh, to get into the, uh, the surface. Uh, in fact, into the uh, apogee point mm. uh, where it's closest to the Earth and then sling off to the moon uh, orbit. Uh, it has, as Mr. Song said, the, uh, seconds, uh, the, starting, the second starting of the third stage, which is, you know, you know there's a, a shut, shutdown of the engine and then drifting for a certain period before it's reignited. Mm. So this is also a very uh, high technology uh, in, in lo any large vehicle technology. Why does it have to shut off uh, in the first place yeah. and drift? For the first working period, the launching vehicle will send the payload into our so-called parking orbit that is about 200 kilome kilometers high. And after the coast arc, so you are asking about why we why do we have a coast arc? Yeah. Uh. yeah, the coast arc. Uh, we the, the yeah, purpose as of you coast said, arc, the yeah. third stage has shut off. Shut off for the first time. Mm. The purpose of the coast arc is to just waiting for the chance to get into the LTO orbit. Mm. And for the different launch windows, we have different launch trajectory, and so the time for coasting arc is different because of the different positions mm. uh, for Moon and the Earth. Mm. Uh, we just heard uh, a tracking station on the ground. Uh, it, it should be a ship. Changjiang uh, has already found uh, the launch vehicle signal. So that means uh, the tracking relay is going on well. The coast arc for Chang'e 3 mission won't be very long. So very soon it will be reignited. Yeah, about 120 seconds. And uh, this is the camera taken off the sky where we can see a very light dot. That's the launch vehicle. So there is no fire coming out of the rocket. Uh, the, the the rocket has also been shut off, as, as you mentioned, and, yeah. and 120 seconds later, it will be ignited again. And during the, during the coast arc, the propellant management system will be performed during the coast arc to mm. guarantee the propellants, the left propellants in the tank, mm. will be sticked to the bottom of the tank. So mm. for the second start, the propulsion system can work properly. Mm. So the rocket is now moving on its momentum. Yeah. That's uh, a drift. Yeah, it, is, it is already in orbit and uh, it's waiting for the right opportunity to yeah. re restart so that uh, to insert into the appropriate orbit and can be uh, transferred into the uh, lunar uh, orbit. What is the altitude right now? Uh, is 150 kilometers? It should be more than seven kilometers per second and reaches the first space velocity, the so-called. The, the first space velocity, 7.9 yeah. kilometers. 7.9, yeah, the absolute velocity. And the velocity to the ground is about uh, 7.5 kilometers per second. It should be over 200 uh, kilometers uh, altitude already. 250 mm. kilometers yes. above yeah. the Earth. Yes, and we need to, uh, then the second uh, initiation of the engine is to gain momentum uh, and at the mo right moment. So it's basically already in space. Uh. And the, the border of space, uh, according to the United Nations, is 110 uh, kilometers, kilometers above the Earth. Above the Earth. So we are waiting for the ignition uh, of the rocket again uh, yeah. to maneuver into its uh, orbit.
So from the design point of view, how different is a rocket carrying satellite, say, from a rocket carrying manned missions? Oh, well, the restart of the CERN, of the CERN stage. And it's quite critical. This is a critical moment, the ignition of the third stage. Yeah. Uh, after some drifting, it is meant to send the rocket into the right orbit. The final orbit. The final orbit. The reignition marks almost 80% of the successful mission of launching. So how long does it take uh, for the rocket to carry the probe into the insertion uh, uh, of the transfer orbit? From now until the separation from the satellite and, and the rocket, how long would that be? About maybe 300 seconds. Five minutes. Only the success restarts of the Thursday engine can get the probe and launch vehicle enough velocity to, mm. reach, the, to reach the moon. Mm. And there are several examples of foreign countries which the failed restarts of the engine mm. just makes the whole mission failed. So why, why is that uh, difficult, uh, the, the restart of the engine in, yeah. s in space, of, of the rocket? The restart of the cryogenic engine is even more difficult for the launch vehicles because there are several conditions have to be met for the restart and even after the coast arc phase because we Compared with the first start of the end stage engine, uh, the thrust is continuously offered by the first stage and second stage mm -hmm. and then third stage. And for the second start, we have no power before the second start, mm -hmm. just the coast arc. It's a kind of loss of gravity in conditions. And now it's working well, so we are assuming that it will carry the probe into the right orbit uh, uh, very soon and that will be the moment the separation of the launch vehicle and the lunar probe and we have a uh, Two tracking ships, Yuan Wang 5 and Yuan Wang 6, uh, deployed in, in the Pacific Ocean uh, to provide continuous tracking and command responsibilities. Yes, this uh, second burn of the last uh, stage would uh, increase the speed from seven, around 7 kilometers per second into around 11 second per uh, second. Mm. That, that's the escape velocity from the Earth gravity. If, uh, yes, exactly. And to the shutdown of the third stage. Yeah. The, the speed is needed for going to the moon directly. And now the shutdown of the, the shutdown and then the, the separation. Third, third engine. It's, it's the complete shutdown or it will be ignited again? No. <laughs> no it's no a more. complete shutdown. The final shutdown. After the shutdown, there will be in some altitude uh, maneuvering to make precisely the direction of the probe. H how do they do that? Uh, uh, by smaller... Uh, smaller uh, engines. Smaller engines. The altitude control engines. Very light engines like the push of a human, mm. uh, those small engines will adjust the altitude how, before how separation. How can we tell the posture of, of, of the uh, spaceship is correct or not, or, or the position of the spaceship is correct or not? There, there are several ways that we can do it. The first uh, way is to uh, use the, uh, the GPS system. Uh, of course, there is also inertial uh, system on board as well as the uh, star sensors. So all of these can be used for to tell the position of the probe as well as the launch vehicle.
Yeah, we are talking about the measurement system of the launch missions. We have the telemetry, which is dependent on the onboard data. And the onboard data will be transmitted to the ground mm. and to be analyzed. And also we have the uh, tracking and position system on the uh, mm. ground station. Well, this is uh, the lunar probe. Well, the separation of the probe from the rocket that means the lunar probe is on its way to the moon. Yeah. The little black hole behind is the variable engine that we have just talked about earlier. That it can change the proportions mm. uh, from strong to soft. This is a nice picture taken from the rocket, I guess, of the lunar probe uh, being separated from the launch vehicle and on its way uh, to the transfer orbit and yeah. then on its way to the moon. The launch vehicle was saying goodbye to the probe. Yes, and that's the uh, completion or the success completion of the launch vehicle uh, and the initial success of the mission. Well, we now see there are some. Uh, that's the burning of, of the altitude control engines. It's uh, adjusting its attitude. Yes, it's adju ad adjusting its uh, yes positions. Positions is adjusting its positions. The lunar probe is adjusting its positions uh, so that it can be on the correct trajectory. This is a picture of China's uh, lunar probe, Chang'e 3. It already separated from the launch vehicle and is on its way to the moon. So in about a week a time it will get to the moon and land on the moon. I think we have just seen the burning of the main upward engine. main engine. The burning of the main engine yeah. on the probe. Yes. It will further, further accelerate its speed so that it can uh, enter into the right orbit. How long does it take uh, for um, the lunar probe to travel from here to the, moon, to, the, to the lunar orbit? Some say it's about four to five days. Four to five days. Uh, because we understand the distance is about uh, 380,000 kilometers between the moon a and the earth. In yeah. fact, that takes uh, the light to travel one second. It's one second to get there. Three hundred and, and eight hundred thousand kilometers. That is the average distance between the Earth and the Moon. Mm. And the distance will be changed according to different days. Mm. Because of the motion of, of the moon and, and the yeah, Earth. Yeah, there are some, some there are some perturbations. Uh, the ground is sending orders to to the probe yes, itself. We call it the uplink of task uh, task orders, tasking the the probe. Uh, on the right hand side, the, the picture is this showing the probe in relation to the moon? Maybe the white one, the white points, maybe the moon. Is the moon, the, the, the relation of the probe to the moon. Um, uh, uh, my wild guess maybe uh, from the uh, camera of the probe, uh, looking back to the to third stage, uh, maybe in reflection of the moon. This is still the camera on, on, the, on the third stage. On the third seeing, stage. Uh, um, seeing the, the uh, fair off of the, the probe into the lunar surface.
So we cannot see any um, pictures of the lunar probe itself. Is there any cameras on the lunar probe itself taking pictures uh, of the probe? Yes, there, uh, there are, uh, I think, three cameras mounted on top of the rover. And the, probe, uh, the lander itself also have cameras. So uh, the most significant stage of this mission is to land the probe onto the surface and then also deploy the, the rover. And the rover will take a 180 degree turn looking back at the lander. Mm. And then they take pictures together, uh, mm. each other, to each other, and then send those pictures back to Earth. So this would mark the uh, most significant stage because that would mark the successful of the landing mission, uh, the uh, fun fully functioning of these two vehicles, mm. and as well as the uh, data transmission system is still sound. Mm. So that would um, uh, be the historic moment where these two uh, instruments take picture to each other. What are the remaining challenges for the lunar probe? Uh, what are the most difficult part? Well, the uh, biggest challenge still remains to land this uh, safely onto the surface. Uh, it would need an, a number of maneuvers and it would ne need a few days in the lunar orbit where it will be re uh, readjusted to the right uh, position before it's descending from a 200 kilometer altitude all the way to four meter uh, altitude and, and then shut down the main engine for its free, free fall onto the lunar surface. This free fall is m most, mostly because of the dusty surface on the, on the lunar surface and uh, to avoid uh, the propulsion causing a big uh, dust or sandstorm to the instrument where it will blur the eyes and the cameras and the probes on board the, uh, the lander. So is it what the former Soviet Union and U.S. did uh, uh, to land this way? Uh, the, uh, uh, not exactly. The, the uh, U.S. Uh, made their Apollo missions all the way propelled to the surface because it's a manned mission. They don't, uh, they don't mind uh, to get dusty. Mm. If you visit the museums in the U.S., you will see all their uh, lunar mission spacesuits are full of dust. Mm. Uh, but the instrument on board uh, our Chinese mission would need to su some kind of protection. And I think we have uh, uh, verified our uh, landers by three, four, four meters into the surface, unlike the Earth, if the lunar surface is one-sixth of the gravity mm. of Earth. So you can see the astronauts in the US, they jump around, they mm. don't walk, because there's a low gravity. And we, uh, with that low gravity, the instruments on board the, the lander, as well as the rover, would be kept safe. Mm. And also, another key moment will be uh, the lander uh, uh, sending the rover to, to the surface and because the rover will, will, will get away from the lander and, and roam around uh, the lunar surface. H how that will deploy uh, will decide whether it is a complete success or not. Yes, exactly. As I mentioned, that the deployment of the rover uh, and the picture to each other is the historic moment where we can see that the we can say that the the rover has been deployed and the mission is successful uh, for for landing this uh, uh, land probes uh, onto the lunar surface uh, it's highly auto uh, autonomous uh, it can choose a landing site by itself by using uh, light, uh, radar as well as uh, optical observation systems you're saying it, it choose the landing site by itself not by the command and control here on the earth? The command and control would have a say, but the, the last uh, uh, moment it will hover around the, uh, above the lunar surface and make a, a final landing by itself. Uh, on, what, on what ground it will decide? Uh, what are the... It has to be a, a square uh, area. Of course the general uh, landing site has been decided by the mission itself. It, it, it is called the Bay of Rimbos. The Bay of Rainbows, uh, uh, yes. Uh, the, uh, the site has been selected and the, the probe is free to choose its last landing site within a few meters. Mm. Uh, it will decide uh, 
to to land on on a on a level ground without many uh, rocks. Yes, yeah, I will choose a, a very level ground so that the uh, deployment of the rover is safely conducted. Otherwise, it will tilt, and the uh, the rover would not be able to deploy uh, mm. properly. Uh, I, I was told that the rover can actually navigate its way, uh, even if it is a slope about 30 degrees, and, and avoid uh, obstacles like rocks. Uh, how can it do that? It has on board uh, a, a sensors as well as the uh, cameras. In fact, it has three cameras on board. It can find its own way uh, and maneuver its own way around rocks. It doesn't have to climb uh, slopes, deep slopes. Well, it has entered an orbit. With an apogee of 360,000 kilometers. Uh, the lunar probe has entered the Earth to Moon transfer orbit. So that could be a success. So that means it has already entered the orbit it's supposed to be uh, in. It's a highly elliptical orbit elliptical that orbit. circles the Earth and the Moon together. So the closest point to Earth is called apogee. Mm. And the f uh, most farthest uh, position is uh, perogee, uh, which has just now announced uh, over the Moon. Why there is an orbit like this? It is because of the both gravitation force of the Earth and the Moon, elliptical circle. The elliptical circle can use the gravity of the Earth to sling off, slingshot off the uh, the launch, uh, the the probe, because it used the the motion of the Earth and the gravity of the Earth to shoot off the uh, the probe into the moon, uh, the moon surface, the moon orbit. Uh, it, this should be the picture taken by uh, the rocket of, of the of the Earth, uh, but we have already seen the separation of the rocket and, and the probe, and just uh, now from the command center, it says uh, the lunar probe is already on its way to the moon because it has injected into the uh, Earth to moon transfer orbit. Theoretically speaking, if without any perturbations, I mean the gravity or, or the sun, some pressure, the end stage of the launch vehicle will also get mm. into the area near the moon. Because it is already in that orbit. Yeah, the velocity is almost the same as the probe. Mm. But there isn't power on the uh, third stage already. So I just mentioned, mm. just get to the area near the moon. Okay. And for the final separation, there are some retro rockets on the end stage will be performed. So the velocity will be slowed down a little bit to increase the distance between the probe and launch vehicle to mm. guarantee the safety. The, the won't collide. Yeah, <laughs> there were no collisions. So that means all the way the, the, the launch vehicle, the third stage, can take pictures of, of the lunar probe. That depends on maybe the, the distance attitudes them. and distance and also the quality of the camera. Uh, because uh, why I ask this is that it seems this time around we won't have live video feed <laughs> from the lander and rover. Uh, like what we saw in the Apollo mission, uh, there is live video feed uh, so seeing Arms, uh, Armstrong making the step on, onto the moon. But this time we only have uh, still photos of, of the two of the two vehicles, right? Um, 
that depends very much on the if they want to turn on the camera uh, uh, during the lending process. Uh, we will still have to wait and see if they uh, want to do that uh, to see the complete uh, uh, video of this lending mission because we can see that the uh, uh, launch vehicle has been using this live feed already and the descending of the probe into the lunar surface it very much depends on the scientific missions uh, and decisions. Of course, they can task the probe and see uh, if they can still obtain uh, live images. Mm. Uh, this should be a computer animation of the lunar probe, uh, the Chang'e 3. Of course, uh, it is already on its way to the moon. Uh, when can we say uh, this is the success of the first stage of, of the launch? I, I think we can say already. Already. It is a, is it a successful launch. In fact, the, the lunar probe is now on itself. Mm. Uh, there's no uh, connection between the, the, the launch vehicle and the probe uh, in any sense. So the, the launch vehicle has completed its mission, uh, mm. gaining uh, the right momentum and speed, velocity mm. required for the probe to travel to the moon. And, and the lunar probe it is all also on its way to the moon. Uh, does it need uh, to have any power right now? Uh, it's only need uh, propulsions uh, and also TTNC control command uh, receiving capacities. So it has onboard batteries that can be used for that mission uh, currently, we do not see any deployment of the solar panels because. Do we need to deploy the solar panels? Uh, we don't need to deploy the solar panel because some of the the side panel can be used for uh, gaining solar energies, mm. and this is not a long term uh, in orbit mission. So mm. that uh, uh, the battery can uh, survive the upcoming uh, days when it travels to the surface of the moon. Uh, just now we mentioned whether we can have uh, continuous video feed of the whole process. Uh, what, is your, uh, what is your sense? Can, can we have live feed from the probe? I think it depends on the onboard uh, power co distribution. If we have enough power, uh, the uh, mission control Because it uses off. power to send those pictures back. Yes, exactly. And to imaging and also uh, sending back signals needs a lot of power. So uh, uh, it depends on the onboard uh, battery capacity and also the, uh, the uh, tasking of the, of the uh, vehicle is done by the scientific uh, committee itself. Mm. So the, the, the whole l soft landing process and, and the deployment of the rover uh, um, operation will be co uh, conducted by the rover and the lander itself or it will be controlled uh, by the ground staff? It will d be done by itself. Uh, there's uh, very little control from the ground because uh, the ground control would not be able to send timely uh, information on the uh, maneuvering and landing of this probe. Because, so this because of the distance? Because of the distance, also because of the uh, circumstances uh, uh, during the landing. Uh, but all of these uh, maneuvers has been pre-programmed into the com onboard computer. So it can do all the uh, tasks just as we have controlled in the, the probe itself from the Earth. So it's basically a robot making its own move. Exactly. Uh, uh, well, the internationally speaking, there are two kinds of attitude. One is uh, uh, a pro to the human spaceflight missions, uh, like the U.S., where the others like, uh, are likely to go for the robotic missions. Hmm. Well, this is a rerun of the whole process of the launch of China's uh, Chang'e 3 probe from Xichang launch, uh, uh, Satellite Launch Center, uh, carried by Long March 3B rocket.
uh, about 40 minutes ago, it gets off the ground from 